Good morning ladies and gentlemen, David here and welcome back to another Atlas video. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date on anything in terms of Atlas news, SMT, Persona, Refan, SEO and more, make sure you subscribe, ring that notification bell as well. And if you enjoyed today's content, a quick thumbs up is always a big help. Now as you've seen with the title, today I want to look at Atlas and their multi-platform practice or their strategy, if you will. And yes, I'm using quotation marks here because it's hard to keep track of Atlas and what they're doing with multi-platform. It's hard to come up with a clear plan of what are they doing? Why is a certain game on a certain gaming platform? And why is the other game not on that same platform? It's hard to say. So what I want to do is I want to look at recent examples and try to figure out what's going on with Atlas and their strategy with multi-platform. I think a good first place to start is Persona 5. Persona 5 dropped on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 and that game, it was a very good game, right? It was critically acclaimed, massive success for Atlas, and it was stuck on PlayStation for years. It's only last year in 2022, six years after P5 first launched, that the game finally released on other platforms. And by that, I'm saying Switch, Xbox, and PC. Finally, that game now is fully multi-platform. Now. That is the 2016 game, right? With Persona 5. There's other games that came out after that that have a strange track record, if I, if I can say so myself. Catherine Full Body. Uh, Catherine Full Body dropped not too long after Persona 5. And that game was PlayStation exclusive as well. Persona 5 Royal, when it dropped, PlayStation exclusive. Now, we talked about Royal and that game finally dropped on other platform last year. But Catherine Full Body then got ported. But not to all platforms. It did not get a PC version. It got a Switch version, a light Switch version. So they're doing Switch now with ports. Okay, so they're, they're, they're putting their games on Switch, but also more recently on other platforms like Xbox and PC. Okay, what's next? Uh, after Catherine Full Body, we've had, again, Persona 5 Royal, but we talked about that. There is Persona 4 Golden on PC. Persona 4 Golden in June of 2020, released on PC. So Persona 4 Golden isn't an Vita exclusive anymore. It is now on PC. What about PlayStation? Well, again, it, it released this year on PlayStation and Switch and Xbox. So they were doing PC, but then they just ported it to other platforms with PlayStation and Xbox. So the, for, with Persona, you kind of have an idea here. They want to be multi-platform all platform at some point that's what they did with golden that's what they did with royal and they also did it with persona 3 portable which is now available on all these platforms as well good but then you keep looking at other releases you have persona 5 strikers which that game dropped on switch when royal wasn't even out on switch it dropped on pc and it dropped on playstation so for some reason that game which is a western oriented type of game right it is an action game and in the West, we like our action RPGs. That's why big franchises like Final Fantasy are not turn-based anymore, and they're going action-based, which I don't like, by the way. It's it's something. So, Strikers, for some reason, skipped Xbox, and it never dropped on Xbox. Okay, what else? Oh, well, there's an infamous one that we have to talk about, and that one is sadly still locked on one platform, and that is Shin Megami Tensei 5. SMT 5 dropped in 2021, and when SMT 5 dropped, it outsold all previous mainline Shin Megami Tensei games in two months on Switch alone. And that game is still stuck on Nintendo Switch. You cannot play SMT 5 on PlayStation 4, on Xbox, or on PC, only on Switch. And again, just like Persona 5, we have no idea what deal there is behind the scenes for that game. Is there a reason why it's locked on Nintendo? I don't think so. I think it's a Persona 5 type of scenario where Atlas is just keeping it on PlayStation for no reason. Well, Shin Megami Tensei 5, same thing. I think they're kind of keeping it on Switch for no real reason. And the SMT, SMT 30th anniversary is about to wrap up in just a month as of the time of recording this video. And we've had no game releases. SMT 5 Multiplat is nowhere to be found. Hopefully this video ages poorly. But for now, that game stuck on Switch. It did really well on that platform. So it's a good thing that it is on that platform. 
But still, why is it not on other platforms? Why not try to make SMT more accessible? It is a very good game. It's a highly acclaimed game as well. It should be on all platforms. Maybe it's gonna take them six years like it took them Persona 5. But let's try and see what else they have. A recent release, their most recent release, Etrian Odyssey, Origins Collection, that one, Nintendo Switch, PC, no PlayStation, no Xbox. It's a DS game, it was ported, there's the dual screen thing which makes it, makes it a better release for Nintendo and for PC. Make sure you check out my review of Etrian Odyssey 1 as well if you're interested, it's my last video, kind of underperformed, so if you're interested, please give it some, uh, some love, show it some love, I would really appreciate that. Now, another one is Soul Hackers 2, Soul Hackers 2. Turn-based RPG, very similar to Shin Megami Tensei 5 in multiple aspects. That game, available on Xbox, on PlayStation, on PC, not on Switch. It's like, what are they doing? So sometimes they're like, let's push Persona on Switch, let's make SMT exclusive on Switch. But Soul Hackers 2, which is basically a new IP at this point, right? It's the sequel to a 25-year-old Sega Saturn Japanese exclusive game. I mean... It was not on Nintendo, kind of underperformed, but at least it was on multiple platforms on like SMT5. But this game is the game that needed the Switch's platform the most and it skipped it. Now, there's other examples that we can talk about. Most recently, uh, we've got the release, the reveal, sorry, of three new Atlas projects that are not out yet. And those three projects are the reason why I'm making this video because you have Persona 5 Tactica, which good job Atlas, it's been a while. It is a full on multi-platform game. You can play Persona 5 Tactica on Nintendo, on PlayStation, on Xbox, and on PC. Good job. So they're finally all in with Multiplat, right? not so much you have persona 3 reload which is coming out on all these platforms but switch so it turns out they are not all in with multi-platform when it comes to persona or at least they're they're all in with other platforms but not switch it's kind of like a soul hackers 2 scenario right you look at that game and you're like i don't see why they're not putting money into it it would have done very well on that platform i think smt5 is a good example of how strongly games can good games can push on switch hey it is what it is. And then you have Metaphor Refenizio, which is coming out on Xbox Series X and S, Windows PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and no Switch. So for some reason, it's releasing on last-gen hardware like the PlayStation 4, not on Xbox One though, just Xbox Series and not Switch. And that game's been in development for a decade at this point, or at least close to a decade. It's been in development since 2015, so we're eight years in. Uh, very, very, very interesting. So, I mean, it's hard to say, right? With this recent release in 2023, I don't think Atlas knows what's up. I think you can make out some reasons as to why certain games are on certain platforms and others aren't. Uh, Refanizio, for example, is one that I am not able to pronounce myself. I'm very confused as to why this game is releasing on these platforms specifically and not other platforms. Very weird, especially since it started development a long time ago. Reload is one that I think I can justify and before the reveal of Persona 3 Reload and on which platform it's coming out, I was thinking the game's gonna release probably everywhere but Switch because it's an Unreal Engine game and Unreal Engine game from my understanding, I know Unreal Engine 4 is available on Switch, you can develop games on UE4 on Switch, but most of the games that are Unreal Engine games on Switch, they're like, they were fully built from the ground up for the Nintendo Switch, like an Octopath Traveler, like a Shin Megami Tensei 5, so I'm sure Reload could run on Switch, but since it started development in 2019, they probably were still on the fence about Switch at that point, because it's Atlas, they make weird decisions, and they decided to skip it for some reason. I think the engine behind that one is the reason why they're skipping it, uh, but then again, you have games like Soul Hackers 2, which again, as I explained before, needed the Switch platform more than any other Atlas games, more than all three that I mentioned today, because Reload, Tactica, and Refenizio are all going to do fine without a Switch version. Tactica's coming out on Switch, but let's say Reload and Refenizio, they're going to do fine on without the Switch, no problem. Soul Hackers 2 needed that Switch version. It needed it, and it, it was a massive flop. So, hey. Uh, but that one is a Unity game. So, Unity, I, I don't... I don't think the, the engine is the reason why it's not on Switch. Maybe the development time, although I don't think it's a game that was in development for that long, right? There's a lot of reused assets, a lot of environments look kind of same-ish or so. Um, 
hey, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. So this is what I wanted to look at today. I think in 2023, it's a fair conclusion to say that Atlas is confused. They don't really know. I was about to say they don't really know what they're doing. Kind of. Let me just say it. Yeah, they don't really know what the fuck they're doing, right? They're putting certain games on some platforms, other not. Uh, in, term of, in terms of Xbox, I, I think it's something that needs to be addressed. I know a lot of people are going to say JRPGs don't sell necessarily on Xbox. That's why you see big games like Final Fantasy completely skipping the platform for the most part when it comes to their new releases. Um, even games like, uh, let's say, Octopath Traveler is a good game that I can use to... It, to push my point here, Octopath 1 was a Switch exclusive at first, and then it dropped on other platforms P with PC, came out on Xbox as well, but they got a Game Pass deal. And that's what is happening with Atlas. These Japanese developers are not necessarily, I'm generalizing here, but they don't want to put their games on Xbox necessarily. But if there is a Game Pass check, I mean, why not? I think that is why you get games like Metaphor Refen is yo. I honestly think, and I would put money on this, if it weren't for Game Pass, this game would not be on Xbox. So you have the games that are releasing on Xbox because there's a Game Pass check. You have the games that release on Switch because they're easy to port and everything else is going to PlayStation. So I think Atlas is just the company that is like, hey, we don't necessarily want to like put too much effort into specific versions of games. Maybe they don't have a, a specific team at Atlas inside the company that is just a port studio. Maybe they would need a port te a team in charge of porting in charge of porting their games. Because to my to me and to my understanding of, of Atlas being a longtime fan, I think what they're doing is they're focusing on PlayStation and then they see if it's possible to make it available on other platforms. It's just strange because they make strange decisions all the time, right? They really do like porting Persona 5 uh, Royal six years after it dropped, even though it's their most successful games. It's completely ridiculous. It makes no sense. Porting Persona 4 Arena before Persona 4 Golden to modern platforms makes zero sense. They're doing a lot of strange... Soul Hackers 2 skipping Switch makes no sense. It's very, very odd at times. But hey, it's Atlas. And what's good is the games like SMT5 or previously Persona 5 that are locked on one platform only, they're getting more rare and rare, right? With all three releases this year, I'm just happy that at least they're coming to multiple platforms there is no exclusive except if there's really a reason for it right like Etrian odyssey origins collection which is so much better portably with a touch screen or with uh, mouse and keyboard support it makes really no sense to put it on lock it to one screen with xbox and playstation so they kind of skipped it for that reason plus not much potential I'm trying to, I feel like I'm trying to justify their decisions. It's hard. It really is. And I'm very curious to hear what you guys think about this whole situation. What's up with their strategy and multi-platform games? This is a topic that I will want to go back to at some point in the future. I'm going to keep an eye on what Atlas chooses in terms of their game reveals for platforms. On what platforms are they going to put their next projects other than all the games that were announced this year. I'm really curious because it's, it's, it's odd. That is a polite way to say it. They have a odd strategy. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you liked it, a thumbs up. Please check out my Etrion Odyssey HD review. I'm proud of that one. I think it turned out great and I love that game so much. Still playing it, by the way, and I'm done with it, but I'm doing the side content now because it's that fun. So, hey, enough rambling. You have a good one, y'all. Bye.